What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome to the 2022 Escape from Tarkov Optimization Guide. In this video, you'll learn how to get the best possible FPS out of your game, which will give you a good competitive edge. This video is mainly going to focus on the game itself, and you'll find more related guides in the description down below that'll help you get even more out of your computer. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, if you haven't already, make sure to update your Windows and of course your graphics drivers to the latest version for the best possible performance on the driver level. Should you switch to Windows 11 for Escape from Tarkov? Well, truthfully, you should really be on the platform that works best for you outside of gaming if you do use your computer for more than just gaming. I use Windows 10, I'm very happy with the way that it works and I prefer a lot of the features that I have here over Windows 11, so I'm going to leave that out of this video completely as you'll not really gain as many FPS as you will lose productivity switching to a new platform. Next up, let's go ahead and fire up the Battlestate Games Launcher. When you see the main menu here, click the arrow next to your username in the top right and then head into the settings. Inside of settings, you'll look for when I close the launcher window, change this to exit the launcher. And when I launch the game, change this to exit the launcher completely. This way you have less running and more resources available for the game itself. The game directory up here is what we're really interested in. Click it to open it up and it should open up the escape from Tarkov folder. As you can see, it's installed here. Now that we're inside of here, all you need to do is locate escape from Tarkov.exe, which you'll then right click and then click properties. Inside of here, head across to compatibility, tick disable full screen optimizations, click change high DPI settings, enable this bottom tick box, select application, OK and OK. Upon doing so, we'll go back to here, click at the very top and we'll copy the folder path that we're currently in. What we're going to do is tell Windows to use the best graphics card available on our computer, which is especially important on a laptop or notebook. Hit start, type in GPU and open graphics settings. Inside of here, you'll want to make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and right under graphics performance preference, select desktop app and then click browse. When this window pops up, click at the very top and paste in the folder path, then hit enter. Then when we're inside the correct directory, simply locate and double click on escape from Tarkov.exe. Then simply find it on the list, click options and then choose high performance and click save. Upon doing so, we're done on the screen here. Click the home button in the top right next to the title and inside of here, head into the gaming section. Then the Xbox Game Bar tab will make sure to turn this off unless you specifically use Xbox Game Bar features. Head down to game mode on the left and turn this on for better FPS. As you probably know by now, recording your game may cost you some FPS, whether you're using Shadowplay or OBS, XSplit, etc. Windows by default, if you have the Xbox Game Bar installed, sometimes captures your screen in the background, like Nvidia Shadowplay. You used to be able to turn it off here, but instead, if you have the Xbox Game Bar installed, simply hit start, type in Xbox Game, and open the Xbox Game Bar. When it opens up, head to the top of your screen, click the settings icon, and then head across to the capturing section, where we'll make sure that record in the background while I'm playing a game is unchecked. Upon doing so, it shouldn't record anything in the background, and we're able to play our game with the best FPS possible. Now we get onto some little housekeeping before we actually get into the game itself. Something very useful to do is make sure that your hard drives are nice and clean, leaving lots of space for the game and software to run in the background. The easiest thing to do to clear up tons of space is hit start and open up disk cleanup as administrator. Inside of here, select C drive for the one with windows on it and click OK. Wait for it to scan through temporary files on your computer. And when the next window pops up, you'll see a whole bunch of files that you can delete without worrying about anything really. I usually uncheck the recycle bin as I go through this later manually and the thumbnails down here as I work with lots of images and having them all cached is useful. So I usually leave these two unchecked and with every other temporary file here checked, I'll click OK and delete files. Upon doing so, hundreds of megs, if not gigabytes, will be cleared off of your computer, saving you tons of hard drive or SSD space. If you have the game installed on a drive other than your Windows drive, make sure to rinse and repeat the same steps, though select D drive or whatever it is instead of C drive. Speaking of other drives, 
Tarkov is a game that you should be running on your fastest possible drive, whether that's NVMe, SSD, or just a fast hard drive in your computer. The faster it is, the better performance you'll get in game, and you may even be able to load in sooner if you're loading in after a game has started. Now, of course, as you know, your computer has limited resources. It's best to keep as many available as possible for the game to take so that things work properly. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. And inside of here, on the Processes tab, you can sort by CPU, Memory, and GPU to find out what in your computer is going where. You should try and close as many background programs as possible that you don't need open, allowing the game to take more of your computer. You may notice that you're closing a lot of these the same way that you did previously. Head across to the Startup tab at the very top and sort by status. Everything listed as enabled starts up with your computer, slowing down the boot up time and of course runs in the background from the moment you log in. What you should do is right click anything you don't need running in the background and click disable here so you can manually start it up a laser. This way you're going to have more system resources available and have less running in the background for better performance everywhere. If you're a power user, head across to services at the very top and click open services at the bottom. In here, sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic is a service that runs in the background of your computer from the moment you start up your computer. You can locate things you don't need, double click on them and change startup type from automatic to manual. That way you or a program will have to start it up and it won't just be running in the background needlessly taking up system resources. Once you've done that, you should have cleared up quite a bit of performance headroom on your computer, allowing the game to run a bit better than before. Speaking of limited resources, if you're someone who uses overlays, you may want to try playing the game without any. I'm talking about the Discord overlay and any statistics overlays, etc, etc. The more that you have drawing on top of the game window, the more input lag and the lower FPS you'll be receiving, at least most of the time. A big offender for me is Discord, as having the overlay on leaves me with terrible mass input latency and sometimes even drops my FPS. Simply disabling on-screen overlays can be something that saves you a couple of FPS and gets you better performance. On top of this, if your computer is GPU limited and it's maxing out while you're playing Tarkov, something you may want to do is head into programs like Discord and Steam and disable the hardware acceleration. This way you have more graphics card available as those programs will use the CPU instead of the GPU for certain tasks and processes. Now with all of that out of the way, if you'd like any further Windows optimization, NVIDIA optimization, etc, do check the description down below for related videos that you will find very useful. Down there you'll also find a link to the brand new NVIDIA NIS, which is basically DLSS for any game and any graphics card, it doesn't have to be RTX enabled, that should net you 20-30% to 30 more FPS with very little visual impact. So do check out NVIDIA NIS if you haven't already in the description down below. But without further ado, in this next part of the tutorial, I'm going to start up the game itself and start with in-game optimization. Now, while I could fire into a map like Lighthouse, it's probably not the best idea to benchmark on a brand new map that's not going to be optimized. That being said, depending on what map you select, you are going to experience some serious differences in FPS. Factory, you'll probably get the highest as it's one of the smallest and something like Woods the lowest just because of the amount of foliage. For a good middle ground, I'll head across to Customs, enable Offline Raid so my FPS will be quite a bit lower than it is in Online and I'll leave PVE off just so I can run around by myself. Why? Well, if there's AI fighting itself, of course that is going to take away some of my resources as I am running a server playing in Offline mode. So I'm over here on Customs, a very well optimized map at around 31, 32 ish FPS in a spot that may not seem like a lot, but I am looking diagonally across the map, loading in quite a bit. Of course, because we're in game, I can't adjust certain settings such as the ones up here, texture quality and shadow quality. These you can change later on. For now, we'll start at object LOD quality. Setting this to lower settings loads objects later rather than sooner. So if I click save, you may notice a couple of trees have turned 2D, but this should result in higher FPS. As you can see, we're solidly sitting at 33, 32, a little bit higher. But of course, you may see something very noticeable depending on what quality you have this set to, and that is the noise. While you have noise enabled, encoders such as streaming and recording should be forced to work a little bit harder and may look a little bit better with this on, though for most people, this is only going to hinder your visibility. It's definitely something you should turn off. At the very bottom of graphics, you'll find Zebla, chromatic aberrations, noise, and grass shadows that you should all turn off 
for better visibility and of course the grass shadows for higher FPS. I've now moved up to 34, 35 FPS, which is a little bit of an improvement. The overall visibility is something that'll affect you if you're someone who snipes a lot or has lots of close quarter combat. I had it on 3000, dropping it to 400, the lowest. You can see it hasn't changed too much, Having that said, two higher numbers means that you're rendering in objects from further away, including people and AI, so it could cause you to drop a couple FPS. Having it set to 1000 is a good middle ground, but you can drop it to 400 if you need. If you're sniping on something like woods, you may want to raise it while you're in those scenarios. As you can see, it hasn't really affected FPS too much, as there's not a single AI here. Next up, anti-aliasing. This should definitely be turned off, or if you absolutely need anti-aliasing, set it to TAA. FXAA is blurry. As you can see, I've gone from a solid 34 to a solid 35, a little bit of an improvement, though jagged edges have been introduced. If you're someone who can't stand these, you can turn it back on to TAA, not FXAA. Resampling will change what the game is rendered at and then sample it back up. You should leave this at 1x so that the game doesn't appear blurry. If you need to render at a lower resolution, rather lower the screen resolution up here. And if you have something like Nvidia NIS, you should enable that, or of course the AMD equivalent. That way you can play at a lower resolution and upscale it higher. The next few options are HBAO, which you should turn off. And it's taken me from 35 all the way up to 43, 44 FPS, which is a huge improvement. SSR, screen space reflections, should also be turned off. Note that you will have to scroll on some of these options. And as you can see, the reflections in the puddle in front of me have now disappeared, but I've moved up to a solid 80 FPS, which is a huge improvement. If we have this set to low, you can see shimmering effects in reflections, which is probably going to be quite distracting and it's cost us quite a few FPS. So I'll turn it off. Next up, we have anisotropic filtering. Usually this has no impact on games. However, if I turn it off here, you'll see I go from 80 FPS all the way up to 87, 88, which is an improvement. If we instead set this to per texture, you'll see that I went from 80 to 82-ish, but if I set it to off, I go to about 86, 87. Then in video reflex low latency, you should have set to on or on and boost. I had it on on previously, and turning it off, I'm setting it the same FPS, 88, 89. Setting it on for better input latency, 87 FPS, so I dropped a few FPS. And you can set it to on plus boost, which will drop your FPS a little bit further, but should give you much better input latency in game. If you're someone who craves reaction times, set it to on and boost, otherwise leave this on just on, otherwise you are sacrificing a couple of FPS. It's very slight, but it's definitely noticeable. I would prefer to have this on. Moving from 87 FPS, the next option is sharpness that shouldn't affect your gameplay at all and you'll usually leave this at 0.6 for whatever your preference is. This is 0 and the previous one that you just saw was 3 which gives you the stimulant effect which isn't the best. I'll usually leave this at the default of 0.6. Lobby FPS limit is something you can change to whatever you want. Having this set lower won't affect your in-game performance as well it only affects the lobby and your performance there. So we're at a solid 86, 87 FPS. Finally, we have high quality color. Moving from 87 FPS, if I turn this off, I am prompted that it'll only apply after raid ends, but if I have a look in game, you can see I've jumped up to 94 FPS, which is a huge improvement, 93, 94. But now we're basically done here. You can play around with MIP streaming and flash indicator to see what kind of FPS you get. So I'll leave these both off. On the post effects tab at the very top, what you want to do is turn this off completely and instead use your graphics card software such as Nvidia or AMD to play around with settings to give you better visibility while you're playing. As you can see, I've jumped all the way up to 100 FPS, 99 FPS, which is a huge improvement. Finally, we have the game tab over here where we can change our FOV. Lowering it should give you better FPS. As you can see, I got a slight improvement there. But as someone who plays on an ultra wide, I definitely prefer the higher field of view. Finally, we have only use physical cores, which is something that's recommended to have off so that the game uses threads as well, but that really depends on your CPU. It's something you'll need to play around with. I, for one, usually leave this on on my AMD Ryzen 3900X. Automatic RAM cleaner is suggested to have off, but you can turn it on and see what that does for you. For me, it doesn't really do anything. So then again, 
I do have an insane 128 gigs of RAM. Finally, with all of that out of the way, the only thing we have left are shadow quality and texture quality, for which I'll need to reload into the game. Because I turned off an option that requires me to restart the raid, I'll need to get another benchmark and then come back here a third time. So with everything applied, I'm now getting 115 FPS. I'll need to head back to the main menu in order to change settings. Head into the settings, graphics, and now we can change shadow quality. Changing this down to low, as far as I understand, uses more CPU than GPU. If you have a more powerful GPU, you should select a medium at lowest. Let's go ahead and try medium. Unfortunately, the weather's changed quite a bit, but you can see my FPS is staying right about the same where it was, if not dropping a bit, but that's probably due to the weather. So 100 FPS here. And finally, all the way down to low. As you can see, not too much has changed. In fact, I might have dropped some. So that option is really up to you. Same goes for texture quality up here. Texture quality you should have matching your system. If you have a high-end system with a lot of VRAM, set that to high. Otherwise, if you have a low-end system, set it all the way down to low. Texture quality is completely VRAM dependent. The shadow quality, unfortunately, is the most tricky one here. The higher you have this set, the more of your GPU it'll use, but it can gain you FPS if you get the setting just right here, which is very confusing. Usually, you'll leave this on high, as that's what most computers can handle. Nope, this is definitely something you'll need to test. If you need to test FPS while in-game, the easiest thing to do is hit tilde on your keyboard to bring up the screen here. Then type FPS space 1, and you should see an FPS counter in the top right, otherwise FPS 2, you'll see even more information, or you can type FPS 0 to turn it off again. Super simple. Usually, you'll leave that on FPS 2 if you're interested in your packet loss, etc. Or you can turn it off if you don't care about much at all. But regardless, that's really about it for this optimization guide. You've learned how to get way more out of Tarkov than you had originally thought. Pushing it up to 110, 120 FPS on an old 1080 Ti by nowadays standards, it's really quite good, especially because I'm running the game at 2K. If you follow the settings in this guide and adjust them according to your preferences, you'll probably have a serious FPS boost, especially over the default picked for your computer. But anyways, that's really about it for this guide. Once again, if you'd like further optimizations, check the description down below for Windows, Nvidia, etc. optimization guides, Windows 10 and 11, and that's really about it. Thank you all for watching, my name is Ben Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!